science panel. I did yes. a whole episode on what a starship would look like. And even then, to go near the speed of light, you would have to have huge laser batteries on the moon. You would have to have fusion engines and stuff like that. You would have to go to warp drive to, to make star travel efficient. And warp drive would take a technology thousands of years more advanced than us. And that's why these aliens, if they really exist at all, would probably be thousands to millions of years ahead of us when warp drive is not such a far-fetched. Well, what is warp drive, though? Like, we heard it on Star Trek, but what actually is it, like, uh, scientifically? Uh, well, uh, warp drive is basically contracting the space in front of you so that you do not go to the stars. The stars come to you. Basically, you compress. You compress the distance between you and the nearest star. You, is, is that like the Hawking's idea of folding the planet, the universe, and then you... Like a piece of paper, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like walking across the carpet. Instead of walking across the carpet, you simply squeeze the carpet and simply hop across. How do you do that? So what yes, about eh? what about now? Are you Much actually pulling a planet towards you, or are you just compressing the space? The, the planet or the star is not moving. Uh, yeah, nothing really moves at all. Inside the starship, you don't move at all. Uh, it comes to you, right? So you basically hop across compressed space. So space compresses in the forward direction, and you simply hop across. Now, Einstein had a, made a mistake in his equations. If you actually Dummy. exploit the loophole <laughs> in one of his equations, then warp drive is possible. It's so controversial because the energy necessary to do this is the energy of a, a very advanced civilization, you know, thousands yeah, of years assume. ahead of us. You know what I always uh, thought, like, uh, trying to achieve that, that um, you know, speed of light. Wow, that's like the big thing that uh, uh, is unachievable or everybody wants to achieve it. How about a gigantic centrifuge, right, built in space? Yeah. And this thing starts whipping around. Now, the size alone with the, the arm of this centrifuge, couldn't you get that thing spinning uh, uh, and, and make it approach the speed of light if the uh, arm is long enough? No. Uh, you couldn't do it. it. You couldn't get close to the speed of light. Silly. I invested in that last silly, week. Silly, silly boy. Yeah. Why, why, now, why, why, why couldn't, couldn't that work with a long enough... Uh, you said that was such like, yeah, I've got it sorted. Because I'm thinking like and with Kaku a long goes, enough no. arm, with a long enough no. arm, like the outside... Just keep you going saying it doesn't make it so. It the outside of a wheel... Mm -hmm. spins uh, faster than the inside of a wheel. The, sure. the rotation is the same, the right. same RPM, but right. the speed is is different. Right. Now, so if you have a long enough arm and you're spinning it around and around, couldn't you keep extending that arm out and increasing the speed? Theoretically, of course. The problem is the centrifuge gets heavier. Uh, mass gets heavier the faster you move. The faster you move, the slower time beats and the heavier you get. Mm. So the energy of motion... I move very fast. <laughs> yeah. So what, Doctor? So the centrifuge gets heavier and heavier and heavier as you try to get close to the speed of light. So the energy it would take would be more and more and... and you... Energy necessary to get that centrifuge to work. Uh, we w we wouldn't have a chance to pass his class. But this is why he, this is why he talks to us in very like small terms. Can we ask him a sign like to talk in science? We all just get dumb and silent afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it's yeah. true. That's why he's laughing. <laughs> I just assume, but because uh, I, I was just thinking on very simple terms, uh, I'm not thinking of the physics of it, where the mass would actually uh, uh, be too much for for the energy needed to spin that giant uh, arm around. To get the speed of light, I'm just thinking in basic, simple terms <laughs> I love of a bicycle wheel. I love wheel. watching you talk about science right now because you got food on your shirt. Yeah. I just think, <laughs> <laughs> I just think that upsets the whole situation. <laughs> I have a tomato seed on me, and I'm trying to talk. I'm like, like well, sling blade over here. I, 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 I have a question about uh, about wormholes. Yeah, sure. How now? If you found a wormhole. How yeah. big is a wormhole, and how do you get into it to transport? Tiny, and you use a spoon. Oh, okay. Or you wait till it rains, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and the worm well, comes out. You. <laughs> there, there's a theory that says that at the center of a spinning black hole, there's going to be a wormhole. That at the oh, center of a black ones. hole, you don't mm. have a dot. That's the old picture. You have a ring, okay. a spinning ring. How big? Uh, well, it depends on the size of the black hole itself. The ring could actually be quite large. For a galactic black hole, uh, the mm. ring could be the size of the orbit of Mercury, for example. Cool. So the ring could be quite large, and if you fall through the ring, you don't necessarily die. Gravitational forces are finite as you go through the ring, and it would be like going through the looking glass of Alice. So think of the Alice's looking glass. Oh. You know, The rim of the looking glass is the black hole, the rim of the looking glass. You put your hand <laughs> through the glass, 
and you wind up on the other side of forever. So that would be a curved black hole, which is what we call a wormhole. But how would you not get ripped apart going into the black hole? Oh. Uh, you have to calculate hole, it right? Uh, yeah. First of all, the center of the black hole has finite gravity, and the larger the black hole, the less the gravitational tidal force is inside. So if I have a galactic black hole, it would, it, the tidal forces wouldn't actually be quite large at all. You could actually go right through. Now, the problem is radiation. That's what splits we physicists uh, on this question, how much radiation is there going to be as you go through. Mm. That we don't know. But Einstein's equations clearly allow you to go through a black hole. It's just a question of radiation, whether the radiation will kill you or not. Clearly allows you to. Yes. At Einstein. <laughs> well, okay, so that's the theory. And <laughs> so how would, you know where the, how would you know where the wormhole dumps you out? How would you calculate that? Or how would, you, would, would, there, would there be like roots built where people kind of knew you go through that black hole and you get over there and vice versa? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's the big question. Uh, there's a new oh, type okay. of wormhole called transversible wormhole that the physicist at Caltech came up with. If you have something called negative matter, it turns out that you can go back and forth freely through the wormhole and uh, perhaps even use it as a time machine or a, a stargate to an, another, another Ooh, sector of, of the Milky Way galaxy. I always However, said, uh, negative matter is quite rare. We've never seen negative matter before. But if you have negative matter, it's a loophole in Einstein's equations. Einstein himself never considered negative matter. Now, would negative matter just cancel out matter? Uh, no. Uh, negative matter falls up. It doesn't no fall down. So oh. if there was negative matter on the Earth, it would have left the Earth billions of years ago. It would be floating in outer space. Oh, okay. So what? one of these days we may find an, a negative matter meteorite in outer space, just like the dilithium crystals of Star Trek. Of course, the what? dilithium crystals would be made out of negative matter. What is a uh, what? What exactly is a? Uh, oh, I forgot my question. Oh, negative God. matter. Oh, what is what is the dark uh, matter in the universe? They know what that is yet. Stupid, you sound. Oh yeah, dark matter is <laughs> invisible hole. matter that we hope to create with the Large Hadron Collider, uh, which is operating right now. Hadron uh, Collider. We hope to make it. In, oh, in that's the, the thing where, where they're going around in a circle yes. in, yeah. in Switzerland. I, I know about that. I like that. Very good. It's called yeah. a carousel, the yeah. way you describe it. <laughs> 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 and there's horses, and you go up and down. It's yeah. teacups. <laughs> 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 that's right. We have, we have Jim Jeffries in studio. You want to ask him a question, Jim? We've asked I all just, the questions well, so far. All, all this stuff great about the, here. the going through the black holes, and you could cut through time. I don't think that's possible. You can, you can, never, you can never cut through time, because if it was possible, someone would come back and tell us. That's the one invention we'd be sure of, right? The paradox, you oh, well, know, of, yeah. it, of it all. If you go backwards in time and meet your teenage mother before you're born... You're just quoting Back to the you. Future now. Yeah, yeah, then what happens is you've entered an alternate reality. The river of time can fork into two smaller rivers. So you basically jump stream from one river to the other river. Yeah, Jim. And what you've met is oh, yeah. another person's teenage mother who happens to look just like your teenage mother. Right. I, really I imagine she would have been fat mother. back then as well. But, but then, <laughs> then uh, literally, if, if you, know, you, you wanted to uh, in an experiment, of course, you killed that woman, mm -hmm. you yourself would not die because it, in fact, is not your mother. Can that's I have right. sex with my mom or not? That's all I want to know. That's right. This, this is called quantum reality, that the world, the universe could split into two rivers, and so you basically messed up another river, but your river is normal. Uh, right. You were born normally, you had a mother, you, you were born, you went to school, but when you hop stream, when you jump stream to this other river that forked from your river, then you mess up their reality. What happens if someone else jumps into your river? Yeah. Well, then, yeah, then they can mess up your river pretty oh, fast. Oh, I don't want to do Well, then, wouldn't mm -hmm. we know if this had happened? Can't we just swap well, rivers? You know, we're going to have invisibility within a few decades. Maybe they're invisible. You're, we already you're have kidding. It. Are you kidding? Executive we're producer. <laughs> you, you, were you serious when you said that? <laughs> yeah, he's serious. Are you, are you serious that we're going to have invisibility? Like, we That's can... Right. We already have invisibility with microwave radiation. That was done three years ago. No, but like a person. And at Berkeley, Caltech, and Karlsruhe, Germany, they're actually working on visible light. And they, they, we can show that visible light, in principle, will allow for invisibility. Mm -hmm. Fuck, I thought when they made the iPod, the world had gone as far as it could go. <laughs> the iPod! <laughs> but anyway, if you watch the science panel, my, my series, yes. Sci-Fi Science, had a whole episode on invisibility. And a whole episode on starships. Yeah, so, it, I, I, I love the show. I, mm -hmm. I, I really do. Is, is there going to be another season? That's right. We're going to start filming for the second season in a few weeks. Oh, congratulations. What kind of, uh, what kind of topics are you covering on that one? Yeah, it's, it's the number one. It's the number one uh, new show on the side. Oh yeah, it's mm. it's amazing. It's a it's a lot of fun to watch and. Yeah. Uh, 
and uh, it really gets you thinking. Is that the Sci-Fi or the Science Channel? Science, science Channel. Science Channel. What, uh, what, what kind of topics do you think you're going to be covering on the new season? Uh, well, well, we're thinking of doing things like, uh, you know, how to, uh, how to terraform a whole planet, you know, how to recreate, create a Garden of Eden on Mars. Oh, so like the Genesis that. device. Yeah, yeah, like the Genesis device, right? Yes. And also, you know, robot wars. What happens when the robots take over, right? How do we prepare for that, wow. for that moment? That's and also what awesome. aliens look like, you know, well, what is the most credible uh, reproduction of what an alien, uh, would look like and what an alien civilization and, and how would they? How would they? Uh, how would they navigate the galaxy? Uh, we have an epi episode on on alien. I technology. reckon they look like silver Down syndrome people. <laughs> really silver? 